different sensors available for the smartphones. Uh, so I got a lot of people asking me about uh, different sensors. Uh, what are the basic sensors that you need uh, when you purchase a smartphone? Uh, if your smartphone doesn't have a gyroscope, uh, will that make any difference? So there's a lot of questions that people ask me. So now you can see there's a lot of sensors that has been uh, stuffed into smartphones nowadays, like a light sensor, proximity sensor, accelerometer sensor, gyro sensor, matter sensor, a lot of things. So in this video, we're going to discuss each of them, and uh, we're going to see what are the use of each of these sensors and what are the basic sensors that you need when you purchase a smartphone so so let's begin that so let's first take a look at the accelerometer so before going in depth into the accelerometer sensor i think you should have some basics about the axis of, uh, of uh, the accelerometer sensor so if you uh, if you install your cpu user in your device and if you go into the sensor department you could see uh, under the acceleration, you can see three different axes that is x axis, y axis, and z axis. So, what are they? So, basically, if you hold this device like this, the axis that is parallel to the length side that will be y axis, and the axis which is parallel to the breadth side will be the x axis, and the axis will be perpendicular to the screen will be the z axis. That's about axis. So, now how is axis related to the accelerometer? So, the accelerometer is a device uh, which basically measures the acceleration experienced by the device. And you all know that there is an acceleration, constant acceleration by the Earth, that is 9.8 meter per second acceleration. So, this device will be uh, will be monitoring the acceleration, uh, which direction which axis is experiencing that acceleration, and it will be switching uh, your uh, screen display according to that, like whether it's landscape or portrait, it will be decided by the device by measuring the acceleration of gravity experienced by which axis so that's it so let's go into the detail of that so you could see now I have uh, placed the device in the portrait mode and if you just take a closer look at the readings of the uh, accelerometer you could see that the y is equal to 9.8 is the re re reading in the accelerometer which means that the gravitational the earth gravitational acceleration is experienced by the y axis that means the axis is parallel to the length by side of the device but if you tilt the device to the to the landscape mode so you could see that the value changes and you could see that the x-axis is reading as 9.8 that means the now the gravity is experienced by the x-axis so uh, in this point of time the device has switched to the landscape mode so which shows that this is the basic of uh, the the switching between the landscape and portrait this is how the device uh, determines which mode that you want if the value of y is larger than x it will be switching to the y y axis and that means the the portrait mode and if you if x is larger it will be switching to the landscape mode so this is the basic thing about uh, the the accelerometer and and how it turns your uh, screen to portrait and landscape so now we have seen the working of the accelerometer and i, I hope you have understood it and uh, now it's time to see what are the uses of the accelerometer. I have already pointed out accelerometer is only used for uh, switching uh, between portrait and landscape mode. It does. It is not used to in gaming or any other things. It is only used for uh, switching the screen between uh, landscape and portrait. So it all depends on uh, which axis is the gravity and is acceleration of gravity experiencing. And if it's y axis, then it will be in portrait mode. And if it's x axis, it will be in landscape mode. That's a basic. Uh, that's the basic thing about accelerometer. So now we have covered all almost all the things about accelerometer, and it's time to move on to the next uh, uh, sensor which is used in smartphones, uh, which is uh, orientation sensor. So what exactly is the orientation sensor? Orientation sensor gives uh, the software information about how the device is oriented with respect to the Earth's surface. So if you take a look at the CPU user, you could see that under the orientation sensor, you could see the three uh, different uh, uh, values, that is azimuth value, pitch value and root value. These are the three values uh, which the smartphone uses to determine the, uh, the, the actual orientation of the device. So let's take a look at the orientation sensor readings. You could see that, as I already pointed out, the device has three different variables, like azimuth, pitch and roll. And you could see that three of them have different uh, values and it is almost constant when you hold your device uh, quite steadily but if you uh, if you tilt your device to any other angle you could see the value changes all the value changes so this is how uh, the device determines the position of your your device so it will be uh, determining the orientation of your device and this is what this is what happens when you uh, do game with the device so if you if you uh, 
place a device in the landscape mode you could see that it is having a particular value and if you tilt the device to any angle you could see the value changes and uh, assume the value changes everything changes so this is how uh, this is the basic of how you can actually work uh, with the game so this is how it works with the game so so now we have seen uh, the orientation sensor and now it's uh, time to say what are the use of orientation sensor well uh, the orientation sensor is used for uh, basically for gaming purposes and uh, for navigation so uh, both these things uh, you, if you if you're navigating with gps uh, it needs to know the position of your smartphone so that you can determine in which direction that you are going so that is uh, the first use and second thing is when you are gaming and if you are driving a car and you incline your device like this or this uh, the device actually uh, calibrate look at the sensor that is the orientation sensor and will determine which direction that you are inclining your device and will adjust the graphics according to that so that's how it goes and that's the use of the original sensor so, so I hope uh, I have already cleared all the doubts about the original sensor and now it's, it's time to move on to the next sensor that is the magnetic field sensor Can okay, I talk about the magnetic field sensor you can see the magnetic field sensor is something used uh, for uh, determining uh, the, uh, the, the the positioning of your device with respect to the earth north pole uh, that is what the basic is so um, nothing to say much more about that because you all know that what is a magnetic sensor it's actually a basic sensor which is used for uh, determining the direction of your device with respect to the north pole and it is basically used for navigation purposes like when you use gps you need to know about which direction is north and which direction is south so that is what is done by this uh, magnetic sensor and it's it's quite simple and it has no other application other than uh, what, uh, the, the GPS navigation, that's it. So let's move on to the next sensor which is the gyro sensor. Now talking about the gyro sensor, people often get confused between the gyro sensor and the accelerometer, gyro sensor and the origin sensor. Uh, they think they are same uh, but no, that is extremely different. Uh, the basic difference is that the origin sensor actually determines the orientation of your device. If you place your device like this, it will be having a fixed value for uh, uh, azimuth value, for roll value and pitch value will be fixed and it won't change. So it is actually related to the position of your device. But in the case of uh, gyro sensor, it actually measures the angular velocity of your device. The velocity at which the device rotates. So its radians per second is the, is the unit of that. So uh, that means how much angle that device has covered within a particular time and that's what the gyro sensor measures and it's completely different from the orientation sensor and uh, talking about the accelerometer sensor and gyro sensor both are similar because accelerometer sensor measures when you move your device in straight line or uh, the acceleration in the straight line but uh, when in the case of gyro sensor it measures an angular rate of change of speed that's what it measures. So what is the use of gyro sensor in your smartphone? Yeah, the gyro sensor is not a must, but uh, it will actually enhance your experience when you are playing a game. Because most of the game doesn't use uh, the, uh, the gyro sensor, but the latest games uh, like Nova, Nova 2, uh, the games like that, uses the gyro sensor, which actually uh, improves your, your, your uh, gaming experience. Because so if you're using a device with a radio sensor alone uh, for gaming, what happens is that if you if you if you're playing a racing game and if you tilt the device like this, and uh, another user you tilt the device like this, there will be no difference. So the velocity at which you tilt doesn't matter in the case of a radar sensor. So if you're playing a racing game, the response will be the same when you tilt like this and if you tilt like this. The, the rate of change is not recorded in the case of uh, radar sensor. But if you use the device with both orientation sensor and gyro sensor, you will get different output when you just do like this and do like this. So the rate of change of angular velocity is, is calculated in the case of uh, the gyro sensor, while the accelerator sensor and the uh, orientation sensor is not able to do that. So the gaming experience will be much enhanced in the case of uh, gyro sensor. That that will be increasing a little accuracy if you're playing a shooting game. If you do it like this. The movement of the gun will be much faster in the case of a device with having the gyroscope. Otherwise, the device will be moving in the regular speed. It will be a constant speed. But if you have a gyroscope, the movement will be much faster. So that will be the difference between a device with gyroscope and a device without gyroscope. So a gyroscope is not a must, but uh, if it, you have it, it's good. So the next sensor we will talk about is the proximity sensor. The basic use of 
proximity sensor is to measure the proximity between uh, the user and the device. And it's basically used when you are calling someone and you are placing your device like this to your ear. Uh, this time the proximity sensor activates and it uh, automatically switches off all the touch pads and lights of your device. Uh, which is quite important because uh, as you can see most of the devices are touch devices nowadays. So uh, if you are uh, not doing that, it will result in unwanted dying. So uh, to avoid that, the, the sensors are placed in this device so that it automatically cut off all the touch inputs and all that thing. So you won't be getting disturbed when you are calling someone. So that is that is the basic use of uh, the, the proximity sensor. And the last and final sensor we are going to discuss about uh, is uh, the light sensor. <laughs> is often known as ambient light sensor. The light sensor is used for basically measuring the amount of light uh, available uh, in the surrounding environment uh, of your smartphone. Uh, it's basically uh, helpful when you have uh, uh, auto brightness settings. Without the sensor you can't really use auto brightness setting in any smartphone. So uh, it, will be, uh, it will be really hard to change your brightness in order situation. But if you have a uh, ambient light sensor in your device, it will automatically adjust your brightness according to the brightness of the screen, according to the surroundings, and you won't be uh, you won't be needing to uh, manually adjust it. So that's it about uh, the the light sensors. So with that, uh, we have come to the end of this presentation, and I hope I have uh, covered every uh, sensors in detail, and uh, I think you have uh, already cleared your doubts. And uh, now coming back uh, to the basic sensors that you need uh, when you uh, buy a smartphone, I would say the five basic sensors are needed when you uh, when you buy a smartphone. The basic sensors are the light sensor, proximity sensor, accelerometer, orientation sensor, and the magnetic sensor. These are the five sensors that are, that you must have in your device. Uh, it's better if you have a gyroscope. Uh, that will be better. That will be, again improve your gaming experience. But uh, these five are the basic sensors. So that's all about uh, this video and if you have any other doubts, any more doubts, please comment on below and thanks for watching the video and if you like this video, please hit like and please subscribe. Thank you.